And, you know, speaking of changes with Vince out, and not just Vince, the bane of my existence, Kevin Dunn. Last night on Raw, they had a impromptu women's tag title match. And it was Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark challenging Jade and Bianca for the women's tag team titles. And two things. Number one, again, Bianca in there. You know, she's not just hiding on the apron. I mean, she got in there early and she worked. Everything looked fine. And, you know, the one thing that I said more than anything is especially based on the way that she was booked in AEW, and this can be the problem with people that play the monster gimmick, powerhouse gimmick, is they don't really get get an opportunity to sell when you just do squash matches. And when you have to do longer matches, the whole key to making this whole thing work is the ability to sell, especially when you're a babyface. So, you know, my recommendation, if anyone cared, was she needs to get on the road, tag matches with good workers, Get time in there and sell. And I can't tell you how good she did because she they got the heat and they went to commercial. And all of her selling, four straight minutes of selling, was all during the commercial break. And then she made the hot tag right when they came back. So, you know, whether it looked good or not, she got her reps in. And we didn't see it. But anyway, they go to commercial and they come back for Bianca's hot tag. So Bianca is going to run wild. She's going to take out Zoe. She's going to take out Shayna. They're both going to get in there. She's going to take them both out. There's going to be a near fall. Jade's going to hit the ring. Going to have the like the whole nine yards, the whole comeback. So I'm about halfway through watching this. And it suddenly occurs to me, I don't think they've had a camera cut in like two or three minutes now. And so I rewound it so I could pay close attention because usually I'm taking notes, you know, looking back and forth. So I rewound it. And in fact, they had one four minute uninterrupted camera shot from the moment they came back to commercial all the way until they did a finish and the bell rang four minutes i have been watching wwe since 1988 and i don't think ever in the history of ever have they done even like a 10 second uninterrupted camera shot i talked about this with dave when uh when bray white passed away we went back on tuesday and we watched the uh shield versus the white family that match was like a great match it was freaking impossible to watch okay they cut the camera like in a five second span they cut that camera 15 times cut 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 zoom 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 shaking the camera as like you know, as bad as you may have thought it was like two years ago, in 2014, it was absolutely, completely unwatchable. But we'd been dealing with it for so long that I don't think we even, like, it just was normal by then. But going back and watching, brutal. Well, Kevin Dunn is gone. And uh, this production of Raw and SmackDown and NXT is miles better. It is so much better I, I can't even like i never seen anything like it in wwe it's just it's unbelievable you know they started with like that backstage shot and then they'd follow the person all the way through the backstage area hit the music they go through the curtain all the way down to the ring for the entrance like they started with that which was cool enough but to actually let you see four minutes of action and literally it was like a handheld they had one camera guy who was like going like this and he would go around the post and he would go back and he would get closer one guy Four minutes, no cuts. The end of that women's tag team title match. It was it was great. So, you know, the main uh, takeaway from the show is, again, too much interference with the Judgment Day. There was a, uh, let's see what we've got here. We had a Dragon Leaf Finn Balor match with outside interference. We had 
Um, where was it? Carlito and Braun Strowman, outside interference. And then we had Damian Priest and Rey Mysterio, outside interference. And literally, every time it was exactly the same. It was Judgment Day running running down, causing the distraction, and away we go. So there was too much of it. I mean, it was a show-long story, but honestly, I don't care if it was a story. It was too much interference. So there was that. The good stuff on the show, there was plenty of it. So the Liv Morgan storyline with Dom is this. If you have been paying attention... They've been subtly teasing that Dom and Liv are together. You know, he's wearing a bandana. He goes into a room. Liv comes out of the room with the bandana, but it's like way in the background. You have to be paying attention to see it, stuff like that. So last week she kissed him. This week she starts hitting on him again. And he is still pretending he wants nothing to do with this. So what they want is for you to not be sure. Are they together or are they not? And so my presumption is this is going to be the uh, Kurt Angle, Stephanie, uh, Triple H love triangle with hopefully a better payoff. You know, they're going to do some sort of match where Liv faces Rhea and Dominic needs to make a decision. And I guess we'll see what that decision ends up being. We had a Sheamus-Ludwig Kaiser match, which was a great match. They had a very hard-hitting match. Psychology was good. Ludwig attacked him in the aisle and took out his bad knee. Worked over the knee the entire match. Sheamus refused to quit. Overcame everything. Finally goes up top for a middle rope white noise. But Kaiser slips out, kicks out the bad knee again, cradles him and pins him. Clean finish. No interference. One guy just beat another in in an excellent TV match. We had Dragon Lee and Finn Balor. Match was good, but... You know, if they were having, like, some feud over something and they had a pay-per-view match, I guarantee it would be better. You know, they could have a significantly better match, more time, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we had the interference from the Judgment Day, and then Braun came down and destroyed everybody, and they ran off. So that led to Priest saying, I thought we were going to take care of this Braun issue. And he told Carlito, go get a match with this guy, take care of him tonight, which he was not happy about. We had a long segment with Sammy, Chad Gable, and the Alpha Academy. And basically, you know, Chad jumped Sammy, and he's beating him down. And then he starts berating Otis, but Tozawa steps in. And so he starts berating Tozawa, and then Maxine steps in. He starts berating Maxine, and Sammy recovers, and he starts going after Chad. So in the brawl, Alpha Academy is leaving the ring, but as they're leaving the ring, Chad... Shoves Sammy into Otis from behind. Otis bonks into Maxine. She falls off the apron and sells her foot like she broke her foot. So Otis turns around and he just sees two guys. And Chad says, he did it. And Sammy says, he did it. And the fans are screaming. They're going crazy. They want Otis to turn. And he's, ah. And finally he grabs Sammy and he gives him the world's strongest slam. And people are so sad. And then Chad goes backstage and he says, Otis, you're my main man. We are going to win my Intercontinental title at the pay-per-view. So really, there's only two options here. One, they finally turn on Chad Gable. And then, of course, Sammy retains the title. And Chad, Chad's, uh, his, his deal's come and due. So I think this will determine whether or not he resigns. Whatever they do for the finish, we'll know if he resigns. Or, you know, they turn on... Uh, They turn on Sammy, and Chad wins, and Alpha Academy is a heel group. So I guess we'll find out which way they go, but those seem to be the two options. Braun Breaker murdered Ricochet. It was awesome. Did the coolest top rope Frankensteiner, speared him for the pin. Ilya Dragunov ran down. It's Braun Breaker, Ilya Dragunov on Raw next Monday, which should be an awesome match. Keanu James... Beat Natty. It's kind of a showcase for her. We had Carlito and Braun Strowman. Braun murdered him. And then we had more Judgment Day shenanigans. And Liv came out and they continued the Liv and and Dominic storyline there. Jade and Bianca did a promo. Shane and Zoe are pretty much the number one contenders. They've been asking for the tag title shot for a while now. 
So Jade and Bianca showed up, and uh, they challenged them for tonight. And Adam Pierce, who normally comes out and says, no, nah, we got to do it, whatever, he goes, you know what? Both teams want it. Let's do it right now. And so we got a title match, Bianca and Jade versus Shane and Zoe. And Alba Fire and Isla Dawn hit the ring for the DQ, which led to a big brawl and probably a three-way for the women's tag titles at the pay-per-view. Bianca and Jade versus Shane and Zoe versus the Voodoo Ladies, Alba and Isla Dawn. Jey Uso did a promo vowing to win King of the Ring this year. I'm sorry, Mr. Money in the Bank. He wants to become Mr. Money in the Bank, so he wants to win the briefcase, which he might. You know, we've been uh, waiting for them to do something with Jay. So, uh, could be that. Lyra also said she wants to win Money in the Bank. She got jumped by EO, so they had a brawl. And then we had AOP in the New Day. And they're teasing that the New Day are going to split. And, you know, if you recall, the New Day has done interviews where they basically said, they were trying to break us up, we just, we quit. Well, that was a long time ago. We'll see if things have changed. Because... They're they're teasing a breakup, and in this match, you know, uh, Woods is selling, goes to make a tag, but Kofi is outside yelling at Cross, so he's not there for his partner. His partner gets pinned, and as the AOP and Cross leave, they're laughing, and meanwhile, Woods is just, where were you, Kofi? Where were you? And Cross had warned him, tonight, you're going to find out that you don't need this guy. Actually, he found out tonight that he did need the guy. That was the problem. But anyway, that was the uh, Raw Report overall. A very good show, although a little bit too much interference, but it's par for the course. Brian, you sound like the guy I'm talking about on this match tonight. Yeah. Miz. Oh, stop. Oh. <laughs> his, his, Huge pop. Granted, you know Miz is Brian's favorite wrestler. <laughs> Braggers Nights. Start over. Start over. Start over. Braggers, Braggers Knights? After a few brags by Miz. A few match. brags? <laughs> That's what I said. Okay. The match started with body hugged tugs. <laughs> body <More>. tugs? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wow! What kind of show is this? <laughs> that, that's where you put your arm around the middle and oh, tag. Okay. Trying to tag them around. Tug? You reach around from behind. <laughs> a tug? Brian, stop. Okay. Miz jumps out of the ring to slow down his uh, hurting. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to tear this apart, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> oh, please, please keep reading it. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.